Today, I wanna make a quick video clearing up some issues with those ubiquitous crop factor illustrations you see all over Google and YouTube, like this one and this one, which are only relevant in a small fraction of use cases, and I think might be causing some users to draw inaccurate conclusions about what is actually going on inside of their crop factor cameras. Let's get undone. What is happening, everybody? I'm Gerald Undone, and today we're talking crop factor. Now, I know many of you probably already have a decent understanding of crop factor, so I'm just gonna give a very brief recap, and then we're gonna move right into the illustrations and what I kind of find a bit wonky about them. But for a basic quick fire explanation, crop factor is that thing of how an image looks a certain way on full frame, and then it looks tighter when it's not on full frame, like when it's on APS-C or micro four thirds, and that's because of the you know multiplier of the field of view based on the sensor size. So, and that multiplier is the crop factor. In the case of APS-C, for instance, it's 1.5 times. So if you're looking through a lens on a full frame camera, and it was a 35 millimeter lens, if you strap that lens on an APS-C camera, which has a 1.5 times crop factor, the lens would be, it would look like a 50 millimeter lens would look, 52.5 millimeter to be exact, uh, lens would look on a full frame camera. And if you put it on a Canon APS-C body, which is EFS, uh, it's a 1.6 times crop, so it would look more like a 56 millimeter lens would full frame equivalent. And if it was on micro four thirds, which has a two times crop, the 35 millimeter lens on a micro four thirds body would have a 70 millimeter field of view equivalent to a full frame lens. Meaning you'd have to have a 70 millimeter lens on a full frame camera to have the same field of view as you would a 35 millimeter lens on a micro four thirds camera. But a lot of you probably knew that already. I just wanted to make sure that we had that basic understanding for those that didn't know for what we're about to talk about. Now, when you look up crop factor, you look up what's my crop factor of my camera and that kind of thing, you're gonna see the same kind of illustration everywhere. And what is that illustration? Well, it's putting boxes inside of boxes. And this is done to give you sort of an idea of what the different sensor sizes are and to kind of show you, you know, what sort of details of an image you would get with the different sensors. Because obviously if you had a tighter field of view, you'd only be able to see a certain amount, you know, with this sensor size. And if you had this sensor size, you'd be able to see that amount. And sometimes they get even fancier and rather than using a rectangle, they use an image circle, which makes a lot more sense obviously because lenses are circular. So lenses obviously aren't going to create a rectangular image. But even the circular examples still put the boxes inside of boxes. Now this illustration is handy for having an idea of how much of an image of a given frame will be cropped away. And that's kind of where it got its name from because it almost looks as if sections of the full frame image are just being cropped away and what's left over is the smaller sensor size image. And this is the reason why lens benchmarks often show lower scores for quality full frame glass being used on an APS-C body versus using native APS-C specifically designed glass because of all this extra image that's just gonna be cropped away. And this is my biggest issue with these illustrations is that it's not showing you anything even close to what's going on when you put a lens that was specifically designed for your smaller sensor camera on. Like if you put an APS-C lens on an APS-C body or a micro four third lens on a micro four third body, this isn't what's happening. There's not all this extra real estate that's being cropped away and therefore they're not really crop sensors anymore And these illustrations don't really show that now There's a slightly more accurate illustration that you'll see from time to time that shows a side view and incorporates a lens and it uh, has a subject and it shows you the angle of view and it shows you how much of the subject will be visible on the full frame sensor. And then they'll overlay an APS-C sensor and you'll see a narrower field of view and you'll see that the subject is being restricted a little bit and how much will be seen. And then you'll be able to get a guess over here as to how much of the subject will be cropped. But again, without eliminating the full frame image circle, while better, this illustration still fails to show accurately what's happening when we put a lens on design specifically for a smaller sensor. So I'm gonna try and demonstrate what actually happens inside the camera using this image that you're seeing of me here now, which was shot, by the way, on a Micro Four Thirds camera with a lens designed for a Micro Four Thirds camera. And I'm gonna try and demonstrate that using this image here. Now for the sake of this illustration, the boxes that I'm gonna use are gonna be 16 by nine uh, aspect ratio because they'll fit better inside this 16 by nine video frame. But if we're talking about real sensors here, they'd be most likely be a three by two aspect ratio, like a full frame sensor, 36 by 24, that's a three by two. But it shouldn't really make a difference for this explanation that we're using 16 by nine. And I'm also gonna keep my explanation of the lens extremely rudimentary to avoid any complicated discussion on optics because I think that would be counterproductive to this mental exercise. And for this illustration, I just need one more thing, which is my flashlight, which is on that back shelf right now. So just give me one second to grab that and then we'll carry on with this illustration. Almost there. 
Got it. Ugh. Okay. Now imagine that our subject is over there and this is the lens and we're shooting this way, okay? And then this is the sensor on the back, but the subject's there. What a lens designed specifically for a smaller sensor will do is create a smaller image circle. So if you see the light on my hand as being the image circle that's projected, if you will, onto the sensor, the smaller lenses will actually create a smaller image circle. Now if the sensor was smaller on my hand, as you can see, this would fit perfectly. But if we use a bigger full frame lens, it creates a large Im image circle like this. And as you can see, less light is actually hitting the center of my hand now because it's spread out more into a larger circle, and this is wasteful because a lot of the image is gonna be cut away and we're not concentrating the image well onto the sensor. That's why we use lenses specifically designed for the sensors. Basically, if you were projecting a show and you wanted to put on the best show you possibly could, you'd want the projector to project only the size that would perfectly fit the screen that you were watching it on, and you'd want to accomplish this over the shortest distance you could in order to preserve as much of the light concentration as possible. So rather than this illustration, which you regularly see, which shows a full frame lens on a micro four thirds body and would require cropping in order to finish the frame, a micro four thirds lens looks like this, and requires no cropping at all. But if you were to stick that micro four thirds lens onto a full frame body, it would look like this, because the micro four thirds lens is projecting a smaller image circle onto a screen big enough to be able to see the limits of it. And this is how speed boosters work. So let's go back to the full frame lens on the micro four thirds body demonstration, and we'll talk about speed boosters like the ones that you can get from Metabones. Now what they do is they take this overly large image circle that you get from full frame glass on a micro four thirds body, and they use an additional lens element to refocus it down to fit the smaller sensor size. It's just like turning one of those knobs on a light that goes from a floodlight to a spot light and puts more light concentration. In this case, it's increasing the total amount of light hitting the sensor, which of course lets you have a faster exposure, thus speed booster. So as you can see, none of this involves cropping. And that's my main issue with those common illustrations is that they only really apply to when you're putting a full frame lens onto a smaller censored body without using a speed booster. And then yeah, sure, then you'd have boxes and boxes and the smaller sensor would have a smaller grab of that bigger image circle. And so then you can use it to have an understanding of how much of the mountain you'll see on a micro four thirds. And then you'll see more of the mountain on a APS-C. But really that's not what's happening. It's field of view that's being determined physically by the lens. And this is a perfect time to talk about another misconception when it comes to lenses, which is that the focal length is somehow changing when you switch bodies. It's not. If you have a 35 millimeter lens for a full frame camera, and over here you got a 35 millimeter lens for a micro four thirds camera, they're both 35 millimeter lenses. And if you switch them up on all the different bodies, they're still 35 millimeter lenses because that focal length is a physical construct that doesn't change just because of which body you put on. It's a measurable distance inside that makes the lens that that focal length, 35 millimeters, and it's, it's just always going to be that. Now what does change though is the angle of view or the field of view. And if you look up on a, on a website when, you, when you're trying to buy a lens, you can see 35 millimeters, but then below you'll see the angle of view or the field of view. And a full frame lens will always have a wider field of view than a smaller censored lens will. Like if you buy an EFS lens from Canon, it's gonna be narrower than their EF version would be. That's just the way that it goes. And that's because that larger angle of view is necessary when you're reciprocating it and projecting it onto your sensor because the sensor is larger. So you need to be able to project it wider as well. And that that's great, except for when you put that onto a smaller sensor, then you have too much angle of view and all that extra stuff is gonna be cropped away, which is why often you'll have a lower total sharpness when using a great high quality full frame lens on a smaller censored body unless you're using a speed booster. Anyway, that's gonna be it for me. I hope you found this video helpful or at least entertaining. And if you did, make sure you leave it the old thumbs up and consider subscribing if you haven't already. But if you did not find this video helpful or entertaining, feel free to hit the dislike button twice. All right, I'm done. <laughs>